What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Beauty and the Beast. I am the Beast. I'm not as beautiful as the beauty. What's going on, beauty? Hey. It's been a long time since I've seen you. We haven't done this show in a while, but we're bringing you guys back some new flavors, so we hope you all enjoy it. The gameplay you guys see before you is a game called... What's the name of this game, babe? Remnant 2. Remnant 2. This game was a... very, very interesting for me. I, I, I love the Dark Souls type of experiences. Uh, she and I really, one of our favorite games we ever played together was what? Elden Ring, right? Yeah. Uh, we played that game till the wheels fall off and, and we loved it so much. And of course, when those kind of games, the experiences die down, you look for something else that could quench that thirst. And I heard a lot about this game and I was hoping that, ooh, I'm, I'm dying. Oh goodness, I am dead. I was hoping that um, it would actually quench that thirst. And so I talked to my wife about it, and we decided to give it a shot. Probably, what, about two months ago, would you say? Two and a half yeah. months ago? I th- yeah, it was like last year sometime, because I uh, never even heard of this game. Yeah, it, it really flew under the radar. I remember yeah. when it came out, it was like coming out around the time of the Dead Space remake and stuff. and. Um, you know, with, oh, okay. with me kind of understanding that and the other Dead Space uh, kind of knockoff, I was looking at this game and I said it looked intriguing. It looked kind of like Destiny a little bit, but in more of a, a rustic gothic type of feel until you realize what the game is all about. So first, I want to tell you guys, this game, um, it actually has procedurally generated maps. There are. Okay. The, like if you go to a world, of course the aesthetic like the leaves and, and the foliage and the uh, dilapidated structures are going to be similar every playthrough. But you can actually re-roll maps and play and have a completely different experience every time you play it. And that was something that intrigued me too because of course in the age of AI that we live in nowadays, uh, I, I, I thought you know implementing something like that with a Dark Souls-like experience that was tough you know and have you rolling and timing your rolls like you do in in the souls games would be interesting but it took us a minute to actually kind of understand the fundamentals and get our bearings would you say yeah like it took a second to figure the game out just on the basic level like the map and like the different worlds and doing all that kind of stuff it was kind of weird in the beginning so i was about to give up i was like i don't really eat like I'm bored of this. It's not fun. And and you guys see it. It's tough. It's a tough experience. I think this is when we were relatively new. I don't know what level we were um, (laughs) in this game, but um, it took us a minute to really get get our our hands around it. And when when we really started to figure it out, because I remember my wife was alluding to not wanting to play anymore. She was like, ah, it's okay. And I was like, what? And I started to really understand the timing, the different type of weapons, weapons, the skills, the archetypes. So you, you can switch to being, um, what, what is the dog guy called, babe? I'm trying to remember. Um, yeah, handler. A handler. You can be um, a summoner and summon enemies or, or creatures. There's so many different types, you know, a gunslinger and all that stuff can matter so, so much in your playthrough, like summoning right here. We had such a good time with the this medic. game. The medic. Yeah, you could you could heal uh, teammates, and it's just really really awesome. I'm happy they made it. Uh, there is a part one we have not played, I'll say, but I don't know if we absolutely need to. Would you want to play part one when you know that every review said not part really. two is so much better? Yeah, part two is really good. It does after a while though become pretty competitive. Um, I mean, not competitive, repetitive. I'm losing my mind. Yeah, I was like, what? (laughs) It becomes pretty repetitive. Uh, Even with the procedurally generated maps, after a while, the end game just, it kind of dwindles and goes away. And there's nothing really for you to do besides re-roll the same maps over and over again. And after you get your items, you, you know, there's really nothing else for you to attain. So you end up just getting a couple dollars here and there. And uh, it kind of takes the desire out of the game. But Overall, what would you say about this game if you if you had to review it, Pina? Um, I would say that it is fun, and it's especially fun when you play with somebody else. So it'd be a good co-op game for a couple or friends, whatever. Um, but yeah, I think eventually you will probably get bored of it. It's not one of those games where you could play over and over and over again. It's going to eventually get stale. Yeah, but I, it's really fun in the beginning. I totally agree. I mean, you could easily get 40, 50, 60 hours of excellent playtime in this game. But yeah. I think that it would, it would require some really deeply thought out DLC 
or uh, new mechanics added to the uh, you know vanilla game to make you know these playthroughs. Because look at that, There's so many awesome things you can do, and you can really hurt yourself, you hurt your, your teammates too. It's just a lot of fun. I would say overall the game is you know if I were to give it a an alphabet sc score, I'd probably give it like a, a C plus or a B minus. It's definitely not, yeah. you know, on the yeah. level of like uh, an Elden Ring or one of the Souls games, but it's really, really fun. Moving right along, we're going to move on to some more video game stuff, guys. So, Xbox. There's been a lot of news about Xbox for the last couple of weeks. And we're not the biggest Xbox fans. In fact, is my Xbox One down here somewhere or is it upstairs somewhere? I don't, I don't know. It's upstairs, but it's like just kind of sitting there looking. <laughs> so I've been, um, let me stop this wonderful music because I hear it. Um, so I, I haven't been the biggest fan of it. When I first met my wife in, in 09, she was an Xbox fan. She had an Xbox 360 and I almost didn't take you out, but you straightened up. You straightened up quick too. But uh, It's all I could afford. <laughs> the, PlayStation was too expensive. Oh goodness, I got you on. But uh, the Xbox, all joking aside, it's a great console. There's plenty of amazing games on it. For the last decade or so, I haven't been the biggest fan. Uh, because, you know, when you hear year after year after year, we got your Gears, we got your uh, Halo, we got your Forza, we got, you know, we got your Quantum Break. And none of those games have ever, like Halo in the past has reached the upper echelon. You know, mm -hmm. you know, back when in, in its heyday and the genesis of the, the, the franchise, it was top tier. I used to love Halo. We used to play Halo together. I mean, we used to love, I still do think Halo, especially some of the older ones are incredible. Yeah. But but over time, you know, the Gears of War, you know, you and I played that. It really didn't tickle my fancy. Not a yeah. huge Forza fan. I'm not a Gran Turismo fan either. And so there hasn't been a lot of exclusives that have been you know, kind of singing to me, wanting me to say, hey, uh, I definitely need an Xbox. Even when the power differentials were happening with the Xbox One X and the Xbox Series consoles, of course I can grab a Series S or a Series X if I want one, but there haven't been any games until fairly recently that had me even considering it. So my older brother uh, was telling me about Starfield and telling me how, how much I should be, uh, you know, apt to go ahead and grab an Xbox for it and, you know, some of these other you know, entities that Microsoft has recently acquired are going to be releasing some incredible games. So my mind was already on Bethesda. Uh, and, and because I'm a huge fan of um, the uh, uh, Elden Ring, uh, not Elden Ring, uh, 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 Elder, Elder Scrolls, Scrolls uh, Oblivion Fallout, and yeah, Oblivion, Skyrim. I love those games. So, I mean, I wasn't going to give that up for anybody. But then you start to see that Microsoft is still allowing some of their first party games um, to still exist on Switch and on, on PlayStation. So I was like, well, maybe, maybe one day we'll see um, some of these games come into other consoles. And it looks like that day has come. Uh, Xbox has recently decided to um, disseminate their exclusives uh, to all who will receive them. It looks like they are yep. moving, moving in the direction of becoming a full-fledged streaming service where they want to, if you have a TV, if you have a video game console, if you got a laptop, if you got a tablet, and you're able to get Xbox on it, they want you to play it there. And I don't know uh, if that's going to be the the best for the long term, but we'll see. Okay, so you heard about this a little bit too. What are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, I think it's cool that they're doing that, but like, is it because? They're going to stop making Xbox stuff? No, that's that's not necessarily the truth. Um, okay. There's there's already a incremental upgrade in the works for the Xbox Series consoles, two of them. There's also rumors of that, <laughs> rumor for the last 20 years, Xbox handheld coming out. Yeah. But, but I got something to say about that in another story we're going to talk about in a little bit. But games that um, people really, really wanted to see uh, you know the Starfields, the the Halos. I think mm -hmm. Sea of Thieves is definitely. I think that's going to be one. Hi-Fi Rush is coming to PlayStation, and ultimately, I think all the the Bethesda, the ID, all these um, these uh, video game studios that have been acquired by Xbox, their games are going to continue to be piped out to everyone who will uh, use them and yeah. uh, to all consumers. So, 
you know, they got a vision. I know it's not Phil Spencer's vision. Um, you know, he was more along the line of this is the Xbox community. This is Xbox exclusivity. Uh, we're going to, you know, create a, the best place for you to play. And it seems like now it is we want any place that you can play to be the place that you play our games. And I don't yeah. think I don't think that's Phil Spencer's uh, vision. Do you uh, think it's going to work out in their favor? You know, I used to really be a hater of Xbox. I really did. Uh, you know, when you're almost 50, you start to tell the truth a little bit more. Um, but I used to really hate on them. But I don't hate on them, man, because if, if Microsoft were to fail or if their console were to become a, a shadow of its former self, Sony wouldn't have any reason to continue to, to create, you know, draw dro dropping experiences or top tier experiences or push the envelope. I think that the reason that we have so much competition is because everyone is so close. Microsoft and Sony, and of course, they're always going to be behind PCs, but the, the generation of, of technology seems to be so competitive. And when there's nobody there beside you, you know, trying to iterate, trying to change things, trying to create new engines or new systems of development, um, it can stagnate you. So I think that Microsoft is definitely necessary uh, to the gaming yeah. world. What do you think? I agree, because I think competition is what drives people to figure out new things to do and come up with innovative ways to play and all kinds of stuff like that. So I think it's necessary to have the different, you know, consoles at yeah. the top. You guys, let us know what you think. Of course, we're just talking through this. We're not going to play the whole video. Spencer, put. A, I feel like Spencer, my head got bigger, too, over the last 10 years. Um. But yeah, let us know what you guys think uh, in the comments below about Microsoft, what, what you guys think their plans are. Uh, are they going to create these new uh, iteration jump consoles? Uh, is exclusivity even a thing anymore? How do you guys feel about it? You know, I think it's important that, I personally think that it's important for uh, a video game manufacturer to have some form of uh, exclusivity. I think that they should have video game uh, development uh, that's exclusive to them. I think they should have proprietary technology that nobody else has. I think that it, it drives innovation and it drives uh, a competitive nature. But I ramble. You know what I'm saying? All this talking makes me hungry. You want to go to Wendy's? Wendy's? No, I don't like Wendy's. You don't like Wendy's? Look, Wendy's, if you're in the right place, takes SNAP, EBT, food stamps, 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 stamps. So my mind, immediately, on looking at this story, was like... um, what in the black mirror is happening in America now? This cannot be serious. You know, this is something you see at the corner store. You know, we accept EBT outside, but not Wendy's, not, yeah. not Dave's bastion of American hope. But it seems it's not true. Along with McDonald's and Burger King, Wendy makes up a big, the big three of the U.S. fast food burger chains. The Ohio-based company has more than 7,000 restaurants worldwide that serve up its famous square burgers and frosty milkshakes. Wendy's fans who qualify for SNAP benefits can use their SNAP electronic benefits at participating Wendy's restaurants, though their choices are very limited. Now, let me ask you a question. If you had to guess, where would you think EBT Wendy's would be located or narrowed down to if you had to pick uh, an area of landmass? Um, I would probably say the big, the terrible two, California or New York. <laughs> Only selects Wendy's locations in a handful of California counties except SNAP EBT cards for purchases according to... To a 2021 Frugal Reality article, the Wendy's website does not offer details on which of its locations accept SNAP EBT cards for payment. And it goes on to talk a little bit about SNAP and what people use it for. This is an indictment on the leadership of California. This is an absolute indictment on Gavin Newsom's leadership that uh, businesses are, are failing, you know, national chains that have done well the last 30, 40, 50 years are failing in this failed state. Now, because how many people are have food stamps in California? Probably the majority, right? I would say so. I would so say it's like they, they can't survive unless they offer stuff to the people that are the majority. And that's people that are on government assistance. 
But it's not just that in California. In California, they're also giving these benefits to people who shouldn't be in America. So California is a bastion for illegal immigration, for uh, criminal psychopathy. There's crime everywhere. No matter what you do, you will be released from jail. You can go inside of a supermarket and steal what you want. They won't even arrest you unless it's over a $1,000 debt. This is, as I've heard and, and I've, you know, I've listened to many respectable people in the world, California is a failed state. It is something that every American should look at and it should be an indictment on the people who took it and turned it into this. Everyone there is liberal. Everybody there is, you know, insane with uh, sexual identity and uh, feminism and Marxism and they hate capitalism and they think that being an American uh, is a bad thing. If you want to, you know, support your country, then you're part of the problem, part of the patriarchy. These people, this state has been degraded. I think it's an assault. I think that when you have um, uh, leaders in uh, upper, higher education, when you see these these liberal campuses and 13 to 1 are liberals, your children are being indoctrinated. Criminal, criminality is being applauded. Illegal immigration is being welcomed. All these businesses, that's all we've been seeing lately is businesses leaving California, right? Everybody's leaving California. I mean... I saw a video on Twitter a few days ago of a woman standing on a corner and pointing at all these businesses that were all left. They had all left. And I'm talking about like five guys. I'm talking about like restaurants. They yeah, left like, like CBS, like leaving because there's so much criminality that, you know, people just walk in and take what they want because of Gavin Newsom and these insane liberal people. And the, just so you guys know who watched the video, Gavin Newsom is the governor of California. He has been governor for years. He's overseen the biggest exodus of Americans from California to other states in history. He's the one who's ushered in all this madness. And they're saying that Joe Biden is going to step away from the presidency uh, after Super Tuesday and Gavin Newsom is going to step in as the liberal president. If you guys think California is a great place where people can't prosper and there's criminality everywhere and illegals and gangs and violence... Go ahead and support Gavin Newsom, because that's exactly who the Democrats are going to put up um, to hurt so many Americans. I used to love the idea of going to California when I was younger. I, I, used, I used to listen to Good, Vib Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys and see those pretty girls on the beach and long blonde hair and uh, beautiful tans and everybody buff. And, you know, uh, of course, I'm not buff anymore, so I don't want to hear about it. But it just seemed like the American dream, surfing. You know, American sunshine, beauty, ocean. palm trees. Yeah, just, just so. And now, there's a shit map. There's a shit map, babe. You know, uh, you can walk up and down the street and pull out this map, and it'll tell you where all the human excrement is. There's huge tent cities in California, homeless people in California, and everywhere. And and now they're taking EBT, and that's not even the worst of it. Now, because of all this illegal immigration. We got all these hor horrific people coming into our country. And I, I hear some people say, well, we have our own bad people in America. Yeah, we do, but there are bad people. Let's police our own. We can't police the world. An illegal immigrant deported five times has been charged with a hit and run death of a Texas boy. <laughs> Rogelia Ortiz has been sent back to Mexico on a voluntary removal. Then he was deported five times following that according to reports. So, when since 2020, we've had over 9 million illegal aliens flood into America, man. And this little boy's family didn't deserve it. Nobody deserved it. I don't care if it wasn't illegal or not. This, this family didn't deserve it. But the fact that it wasn't illegal and the fact that we have a government now that is so hell-bent on saying we don't have borders anymore. You can come into America. You all can come in. Come on in. Bring your family. Walk up here. Make that trip. We will fund your life. We will subsidize you to live in hotels. We will give you thousands of dollars every week. We will give you education and food. We will house your, your children. We will do anything we can to keep you here. And the people who never asked for you to come here are going to foot the bill. It is insane what America has allowed to happen. It is insane. I, I've seen these videos. Have you seen the videos of all these people crossing the border? 
when I tell you I've seen videos of hundreds of thousands of people crossing that southern border, not being vetted, tons of men in their 20s coming up here alone. You'll see 500 men just standing there waiting to come into the country. It's like we have imported militaries into the country. We have allowed people who are military age to come into our country that have ideas from the Middle East, from China. Thousands of people, immigrants from China, have walked across our southern border. You think they're here to teach us how to make rice? It's just insane. And A lot of them have ill intent. Well, I mean, there was one guy who came across the southern border and he said, um, you guys aren't very smart because you don't know who I am. He said, but you will know. You're going to know who I am. These people from the Middle East who scream death to America, they want to destroy America. We have these these young liberal kids who are mentally un, unfit and unwell, who are siding with Hamas, siding with nations that want your death. And when these people come here, and I think the next two or three years is going to be a real horrific thing to see because just the simple fact that we have millions of them in our country, 1% of that, it just 1% is nefarious. We are in hor horrible trouble. Mm. Who's going to remove these mm. people? What happens when the FBI just released a document a few days ago saying that two um, Mexican gangs are joining forces in New York, MS-13 and another one, to try to muscle New York. The drug cartels have made billions of dollars from Biden. And, and, you know, getting paid to smuggle these people in, they have more power now than a lot of these states. Yeah, and they're not, it's not like they're going to come here and vote against the people that are just funding them their life. So it's like they're just letting as many in as possible so they can get as many votes as possible so they can stay in control. Let's see what they say on Fox News about this guy. We are back with a tragic story highlighting the grave nature of the country's border crisis. An illegal immigrant charged in the hit and run that killed a 10 year old boy as he was walking home from school. Unbelievable. Being held by ICE agents in Texas. Officers found and arrested that guy that you see in the picture. These the people aren't coming here to get jobs, man. Texas. According to the county sheriff, they're coming here because they want to. At least five times in the past. Fuck. 10 year old. AJ Wise wow. died of his injuries last Friday morning Goodness gracious. after he was struck near an intersection. Goodness gracious. He was describing the boy that you see there in that picture as the sweetest, coolest, funniest little boy you oh ever Oh my goodness. Seen. Poor family. Charges against the suspect have been upgraded now to a hit and run accident causing death. I mean, at what and it's point? like this guy was already supposed to be deported. He was deported multiple times and still found his way here without a care in the world. This is something for everybody watching to think about, okay? If you are in a less fortunate nation and you have an old man who's on the verge of death become the president of the United States and start doing things that look like they are counter to the national security and interests of the United States, like letting anyone come into America, and then you are being... Um, you know, wooed by leftists and Democrats and they're telling you to come on in and they're giving you, you know, maps and things on TikTok on how to get into the country. You're going to do everything you can to appease that side of the political party. You see that these, like AOC said, it's not an immigration problem. It's a documentation problem. So that means that they want these people who aren't even Americans to come into our country and take over and take our country from us. They want to give them the right to do it. And so... There's certain uh, legislation in New York that's already been passed where they're trying to allow illegal aliens to vote in local elections. And um, if they're able to, you know, persevere and, and push this kind of agenda forward, Americans will have their nation stolen from them in one fell swoop in no time because all the power will stay in the party that is allowing these millions of people to stay here. They will do anything they can to you know, uh, dissuade people from voting Republican. They'll do anything they can to get free housing and free hotels and free food and free shit that the American people, none of us get. We don't get anything. We get the bill. Taxed. Just like Ukraine. Over $200 billion we sent to Ukraine. Our children's children's children will be paying for that. Your children will be paying for that. But 
We don't get a say. We just get the bill. These people are corrupt, and these people in positions of authority are corrupt. Speaking of corrupt, I guess, politicians or district attorneys, let's come down here to Atlanta and talk about, I know you guys have all seen this fanny. And after the two Any were fanny. involved in a romantic relationship. Let's start back in 2019. Yeah. So um, you and Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at a conference? That is correct. I think in one of your motions, you tried to implicate and slept with him at that conference. She mad. Mine, to be extremely offensive. I stayed at that conference. Mr. Wade was Is there a dress on backwards? I did not meet him. When he I don't know, but it looks all messed up. I was standing outside. Oh, I think it is. Look at the zipper. Lisa Reeves, who is a judge. Me and her were just having a conversation. Mr. Wade walks up. So for people who don't know, this is Fannie Willis, uh, Atlanta, Georgia district attorney who is prosecuting Donald Trump and many others under the RICO Charge Act uh, and stating that they work to um, change the election. They wanted to uh, steal the election from the Democrats. Now, that sounds like an interesting story. They haven't really proven anything yet. But now the story, the truth has come out that this woman... This district attorney had a boyfriend who was married. Uh, do, his, his, name, his name, what's his name? Dwayne Wade? No, no. I forget his name. Um, I know Wade is part of his name. It ain't Dwayne, though. But um, they've been sleeping together since 2019, and he was never qualified to ever be a prosecutor. Um, he comes from a small law office here in Georgia, and uh, she decides to take it upon herself to appoint him as a special counsel to investigate Donald Trump and his cohorts. And she pays him $750,000. And he ends up taking her all around the country, uh, buying her country things. she don't even know about. Yeah, she didn't been, she look, she maxed, she got caught too. Um, and basically it seems like a, a way for her to benefit financially. Um, she stole this woman's husband. He divorced his wife the day that he got appointed as special counsel. It just reeks of... He yeah, he doesn't even have credentials for it. Yeah. It's like just uh, to, such nonsense. So check it out. So her boyfriend, Mr. Wade, he would take her like on these extravagant cruises and to different countries and things like that. And whenever he would take her, she said she would reimburse... Ooh, that face. Yikes. She said she would reimburse him with cash. Thousands of dollars. And, From uh, her house. Yeah, and, and when the... Uh, when the uh, attorney asked her, you know, where was this money coming from? She said, it's not from nowhere. It's from home. I got money in my house. You're supposed to keep bricks in the house. She got the bag. Yeah. I think that we did. That's what I'm telling you. I think that there's a possibility that we stayed that night. And she also. I don't remember. But I think that there was a night spent in my She don't house. remember nothing. She, she doesn't remember she anything. She also said that she took campaign fi finance money out of her campaign. And, and put kept it, it at her house. And kept it in her house. You know, these... And, and the thing that really perturbs me about Fonnie Willis is that she uses her blackness as, a, as you know, that's her cudgel to hold on to to beat you over the head. If a person does something wrong, you just bring out the, the fact that I'm black and or, or I'm a woman. It's called intersectionality. I'm a black woman. Those two things, you cannot assault me. You can't accuse me. You can't do nothing because I'm black and I'm a woman. And as a black man... This shit is so, it's so tiring. It's so tiring that the people who want to always point racism at everybody else uses it as quickly as they can. That black card, when you do some dirt, and she is a dirty prosecutor, she would definitely be stepping down from this from this uh, case against Donald Trump. But yeah, yeah, what she did here was totally wrong. Um, she's probably got five or six big investigations coming her way. Uh, I'm sure the FBI is going to be looking at her. She she met with the White House before they brought these indictments against Donald Trump. They met twice at the White House. This whole thing just reeks of corruption. And I hope I can't wait to see what happens to Miss Fonnie Willis. What, what do you think about it? I know you've been watching for the last couple of days too. What do you think about Miss Willis and Mr. Wade? This it's like uh, we're living in a movie. It's like the biggest plot twist to. An action movie, this whole thing about everything that's been going on since like 2016. Mm, it is, it's, it's wild. It's this is hilarious to me. Uh, you know, it is, it, it is hilarious, but you know, under 
the undercurrent of all this stuff that people aren't really aware of is that there are psyops, there are things that are happening around us all the time to keep your mind from focusing on what should be important. Half the country, yeah. half the country is focused on Taylor Swift. Half the country is focused on, uh, you know, what's going on with Israel and Palestine. Uh, another portion is worried about Ukraine and Russia. Nobody seems to be worried about what's happening in America. I honestly have fear now in this country because of what we, we've allowed to happen. Our economic status is terrible. You know, we're on the cusp of world war and we just, we've just opened the door to allow the exact people in our country that we've always fought tooth and nail to never allow in here. And I fear that we're going to, you know, it, it is a story. We're living through one of the most insane stories ever. We got a president that they're doing everything they can to stop him from ever running. We got another president who's corrupt as hell that is doing things that are undemocratic, you know, uh, trying to uh, arrest his political, oppo- his political opponents, uh, funding wars, not calling for cease of, ceasefires, um, derelict in his duty to secure our border and protect the homeland. A bunch of crazy stuff's going on. So I would just tell people to keep your eye on the ball. And this woman even here... Then, even then, it's like they give people these stories like this or the Super Bowl and all that kind of stuff, all these controversies and nonsense. They give it to us to watch and pay attention to while they're over here doing something else like passing bills that are going to not benefit us. Destroy you. As a society. And they're, they've been doing that for years. And it's like the mainstream media just tells you exactly what they want them to tell you. Mm. Whether and it's, you know, CNN or Fox. They're, they're, they're state run media. They're state run. That's why people, you have to go to the internet nowadays to find any real damn truth. And something that's always going to be true is how feminism <laughs> is destroying nations. Look, now, before we get into this little quick story, I just thought it was funny. I wanted to quickly mention it, uh, that South Koreans blame feminism for demographic collapse. You and I don't talk about this very much because we have a really normal and natural home life. But what are your thoughts on feminism, maybe as far as what you think it started off as back you know, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, and what it turned to and what you think it stands for now as a woman. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Uh, I honestly don't know because there's so many different versions of feminism and people use them at different times for different things. And it's like, it's not really to me anymore. It doesn't mean anything. I think when they first started it, they just wanted women to, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I wasn't around back then when they first, I was never I never felt unequal growing up or anything like that. So sounds like you're an American woman. That's what I like to hear, baby. It's like That's I don't really know. Feminism was just like, oh, I want to be able to work like a man works. That, I mean, I think women nowadays would probably uh, complain about those women uh, who put them in this situation. But yeah, oh, yeah. originally feminism was um, something that was brought up um, by liberal women who wanted the right to work, the right to vote. The right to have uh, physical autonomy, the right to have, you know, and now it's really gotten second wave and third wave. Well, see, I agree really... with that kind of stuff, but but now, nowadays, it's it's so nonsense. Well, see, and, back then it was equality, and, and yeah. I, I believe in that because there was a time where I wouldn't have been equal to another American because uh, the the original founders did they didn't live in the utopia that we have today, so they wrote it for the time. But yeah, I think that men and women should all be equal. I think that equality is a real, it's a very, it's something we all should be shooting for, egalitarianism. But when it, feminism nowadays is not about equality, it's more about oppression to me. And Mm -hmm. when you see, in my mind, when you you hear a, a woman who's an extreme feminist or a woman who puts feminist values before anything else, they usually are antithetical to masculinity. And a man's natural roles and relationships. So if a man wants to be a protector, if a man wants to be a provider, if a man thinks that his woman, the woman in his life should be, uh, you know, the mother and the one who provides, um, he can provide uh, discipline and, and, and she can provide caring and, and, and love to a child. The more natural roles, I feel like feminists would be against those natural roles and tell you that they could be changed. That you don't have to be the defender if you're a man. Just because you're big and you're stronger and you're hairy and you got a deeper voice, you don't have to fall into that stereotype. 
that role is something that we've created. It's a spectrum. Women don't have to be mothers. They don't have to be nurturers. They can be the tough guys and the ones who discipline the children while the father picks them up and, and pampers them and tells them that everything will be okay. That the father can be at home, you know, raising his children and, 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 you know, wearing an apron and cooking and cleaning and dusting and, and, and the wife can be, you know, in some sky rise downtown, you know, making 300,000 a year because, uh, you know, gender roles are something that we, we create. They're societal and they're, there's nothing natural about it. I think that that version of feminism is what's taken over and what's caused so many issues in society. What do you think about that perspective on feminism? Yeah, I agree. And I feel like South Koreans, like, they're more um, traditional. So it's like they see this and it's like see bewildering to them because they're, they're more not used to traditional it. Yeah, people. They're, they're not used to it. And, um, we got- and, and America is trying to move as far away from traditionalism as possible. I think nowadays tradition to many, especially young, you know, millennials and things, tradition is like religion. It's something they don't even believe in anymore. And uh, it's a sad, sad thing when you're a traditional family and you're raising traditional children and you're looking at the world and it looks like through a kaleidoscope of the Wizard of Oz and, and hostile. It's like the world's crazy and you want your children to have a normal life. And so, you know, when you see that the world is so far outside of the realm of tradition or normalcy you see people dressed up in drag reading to five-year-olds openly and not afraid then you know that we've lost you've lost grip you lost grip of reality and uh, that's just my perspective on it um, and, and i'm sure that's what they feel over there and they see their own people emulating the debauchery of the west and i just wanted to give a shout out to dylan uh, who's the leftist who wrote this uh, from Kagwa National University. South Korea's pressing fertility challenge is complex and solely linking it to feminism uh, def- deflects focus from underlying societal and structural contributors uh, to the demographic crisis. So he's just a, uh, you know, soy boy, but they know what's going on over there. South Korea has the worst fertility rate in the world. Some link it to the uh, link the country's demographic challenges to the emergence of feminism, saying that it instills bitterness into the hearts of women, worsens gender relationships, and discourages young women from having children. And I 100% agree. I kind of touched on that. You know, if you're a feminist and you meet some guy, he's like, here, let me open that door for you. You're like, I can get it. You're creating a contentious environment. You happen to get pregnant for, for in, interacting in a heterosexual relationship, but you're a feminist. And your, husband, your, your boyfriend says, oh, yeah, well, um, the baby's going to have my last name. And you're like, no, I mean, it creates problems. You understand? Do you, do, it, you, do you agree with that? The way I mean, it could, it could. Yeah, that I mean, in that sense. Yeah. What? It's just I think that feminism is just like liberalism in a way. They feel like they you have to challenge the norm. I, yeah, I think people are using it just to benefit from something in certain situations. And they're just they just want to complain about something or they want to use it in a way that's it's not it wasn't originally meant to be used in. I, I, I totally one hundred percent agree with you. And so we're gonna end in the this episode on some fun stuff. Um we talked about a lot. But I want to talk about the Nintendo Switch too. Uh, now, there's rumors that this thing could be coming out this year. I think it'll probably be either. Imagine if it came out holiday 24. That'd be crazy. That'd be awesome, but I doubt it. But are you really excited for the prospect of what Nintendo will be bringing? Now, we both have Switches. I just recently upgraded my Switch to something called the Nitro Deck. The Nitro Deck, uh, it's upstairs. I should have brought it down for the show. But basically, the Nitro Deck is a. a it's like a sleeve that your screen goes into and it has real like psi axis controllers haptics um it has triggers built into the back and it feels like a really well made and sturdy device it looks more like a steam deck when you slide the screen into it i could not stand the joy cons (laughs) let me just say that joy cons are always difficult for me to really you know get get a natural vibe for playing street fighter with these was always a nightmare. And so the uh, Nitro Deck, I'll show you guys that. I'll make another video and show you guys that. It's really cool. But the Switch 2, what, I mean, what are you thinking, babe? You thinking that it's just going to be a graphical update? You think it's going to be more like having a PS4 in your pocket? I mean, I mean, that's really all Nintendo does 
you know, that I don't know. Like, I'm not really excited for uh, the well, second one. I, even if it does look a little better, I, I don't think I could justify personally for me buying a whole new console just to get a little better, you know, picture. Yeah, I, like, I think it's going to be it's going to look better. But one thing I will say that I am actually excited about, and, and many of you guys might not have known this, but Nintendo, they iterate on controllers with every video game console they make. Super Nintendo was fantastic. It was the best controller for its time. Uh, the GameCube, the Nintendo 64 was the first controller that had an analog stick. Uh, the GameCube controller, what did the GameCube controller have? I'm trying to imagine, I'm trying to remember. But the, the Wii U, you know, the Wii U, the big screen, the yeah. Switch, um, the regular Wii with the nunchucks, they always iterate with their controllers. So I'm excited to see that. But to me... I don't, do you think they're really going to change that, though? It's going to be different. Hopefully, these will be a little bit better. It'll be more ergonomic for your hands and make you feel more like you're holding a, a video game console instead of, a, you know, a 25, yeah, 25 ply c- cardboard that's flat on, be, on each side. I want something that's going to contour to my fingers and be comfortable to hold. See, I got little hands, so it's not too bad yeah. for me. Mm-hmm. The thing you bought for the Switch is a little too big for my hands, but ever so slightly. Yeah, um, I guess I have to see. You know, I have to see what it looks like. Um, for me, this thing right here, though, um, if you guys haven't heard of this, this is called the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. Um, and it's it's made by a company called Retroid. Amber and it just made the RG5, is it 5663, I think? That's very, very similar. Um, but this little handheld, this console, is something I'm getting ready to pick up now. I'll probably have it in the next couple of weeks. It plays everything, and right now they're playing playing a 3DS. I mean, it plays 3DS. It basically is, plays everything, right? Yeah, I mean, some Switch games work on it. And, yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, let me see. Pac-Man, Panzer Dragoon. Look at this. It's, this is really, really insane. Doesn't it have, like, Xbox games and... Yeah. All that kind of stuff. Now, now, see, look at that switch. And this is a two hundred dollar console, guys. Imagine having every retro console that you ever had in your life. Like I got fifty retro consoles over there. Imagine this, and, and you you have them all on here. They're all on the memory stick. You want to play Sega Saturn? You want to play, you know, arcade? You want to play? Look at this. It's quite preposterous what this thing is able to do. And so when I see something like this, and it streams. You can stream and, and you can do like PlayStation 5 remote play. Yeah. So this would like remove the need for me to get a PlayStation portal. And that's something my wife and I have been wanting to, to potentially get our hands on. And and the Amber Nick does too. So you can play Xbox Game Pass on here. You can play PlayStation 5 on here. And on top of that, every, like if you want to play Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, you want to play Game Boy, Game Gear. Um, GameCube. Um, what else is on this damn thing? Any consoles that you can pretty PSP. much think of. PSP is on here. You know, of course, arcade. You can go back to Atari. You can come all the way up to PS2, I think. PS2, Dreamcast is on here, and they all run. They run really well. So, for me, this is something. This is something that to me is probably a little bit more interesting for now. You know, that's Rayman. We all know what that looked like. See, that's why I want you you get this one and see how the remote play works on it. And then I'll decide if I want this or the portal. Okay. Well, you guys tell us what you think. I mean, are you guys big fans of the Nintendo Switch? Do you think the Switch 2 is going to be worth its weight in gold? Would you ever consider doing something like this? This is the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. It's incredible. It's small. It's ergonomic. It's a, a very fine quality build. It's multiple colors you can get like the little sleeves for your hands and the, the little grips that go on the back it's really really cool you guys let me know what you think about that but um is there anything you want to share with these guys before we leave peanut uh nope i think that's it yeah i i'm happy that we came back it's been a minute since we had a, a, a little bit of time it's been a lot going on in life kids graduating college kids breaking stuff around the house just staying busy but we do appreciate you guys hanging out with us for another episode of Beauty and the Beast. Again, if you have not done it yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you haven't, click that thumbs up to send us to the algorithm, gods, 
and let us be seen. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'm Peanut. We'll see you guys next time.